journal entry. Let's drill down onto the journal entry. And so here's the journal entry. Now, if I wanted to adjust this, I can hit the drop down up top and say that we want to repeat, reverse, edit. I'm going to edit the transaction. And I, and I want to point out that normally when we did the adjusting entry, uh, they have this reversing tab. Now it's disappeared, they don't have it anymore. But there's a reversing tab when you first enter the journal entry. And so you could automatically reverse it when you put the entry in if it's a reversing entry, which is pretty neat. The other thing I want to point out here is that you might actually want to look at this transaction to see the debits and credits so that you can reverse it exactly. Now note, when you reverse the transactions, uh, sometimes people get a little bit mixed up on, on what the best way is to reverse it. And let me just show you what I mean. Uh, if I go over here and notice that by natural, naturally for debits and credits, I usually put the debit on top. That's what you're supposed to do. That's like the normal process. Uh, but but if that if it's easier to see by putting the credit on top, then my recommendation is that's what you should do. So if I, I'm going to format this by going to the Home tab, Format, and make a skinny M. And let's just do the same transaction. We could say this is going to be the same here, debit, credit. Let's format this black and white and center, Home tab, font or alignment, center, font, black white let's center it alignment center and then what i'm going to do instead of reversing it instead of saying i'm going to put the debit on top like this uh, or whatever and then like this that's still that's not too difficult to see uh that way because there's only two accounts affected but it's still a little bit uh jarring because usually we read from top to bottom right and if i'm trying to compare these two the easiest thing to do on the reversing entry is just to stay the same from top to bottom and then just reverse the debits and credits like that. And so that's, to me, a whole lot easier to read than trying to rejigger, reorganize, you know, the number of the accounts. So that's what I'm going to do. So and so when I do the reversing entry, that's what I'll do over here. Let's do another manual. Let's go into the manual journal, which you can go here, or you can go to the accounting dropdown and reports. And then we're going to say this is going to be the, the journal report. And then we're going to enter a manual journal with some manual labor right here. Hope, make sure you're warmed up. You've got, you've worked out your muscles so that you can, this is going to be a reversing one and one to get strained and then sue me because they pulled, they pulled their muscle on um, their keyboard muscles. Let's go back on over to, this is going to be as of all reversing entries are the day after the cutoff. So the cutoff for us is 228. All reversing entries are on March 1st. Now, again, you, this, this confuses people a lot of the time, so I'm just want to point out that you're going to say, hey, look, the, the, the payment doesn't happen until March 15th, so it would be more correct. You could be correct for 15 more days or closer to correct if you don't reverse it until March 15th because, because, you know, that, because that's when... The, but the, we're not trying to be correct for every point in time. We're trying to be as correct as we can as of the cutoff date. And then on the reversing side, I don't want the reversing side hanging out in the middle of the next period because then it's harder to locate and it confuses people. So we want to reverse everything as of the same date, the first date after the cutoff, so we can easily see one day being the cutoff entries and the next day being the reversing entries, sacrificing and being okay to sacrifice while doing that, the fact that we're not making everything perfect for the middle of the of the time period in our case the month now notice here's that reversing entry so when i entered the adjusting entry i could have just hit the drop down and say reverse it and it would do this reversal for us which is cool but hard to see and there, that's why we're doing it manually here so we can see exactly why we would do the reversing entry so the accounts that are going to be affected we, we're going to be debiting we're just reversing this one so interest expense so I'm going to say interest, ex this is going to be a credit now, interest expense is going to be a credit. So we put in the credit on top and you're going to say, but that bothers me. 
That bothers me, but that's okay. Get over it because it's easier to do it that way. But my supervisor doesn't like it that okay. Then do what the supervisor wants, otherwise they might destroy you or something. But otherwise I think it's an easier and easier process. And then we've got the interest payable here, the loan, and this is gonna be a debit. So interest expense, credit, interest payable, debit, reversing entry. Let's post it and then check it out. Make sure it's on March 1st, February, January, February, March. Okay, just making, I had to say the months to make sure that that's the one after February. February. Sometimes I get them mixed up, even though I do this every day. For crying out loud, you get mixed up by, I mean, okay. So we're gonna go down and then we can see the side-by-side -side, uh, for uh, February. We can actually, let's add, I'm thinking if I wanna add a column, let's add a column to our layout over here because that would be neat. And I'm gonna add a column for the date of uh, March. Let's add another column for March out here. Poor K, no, why not, you know, why not? So there it is, we added March. Let's, let's update the layout and I'm going to go ahead and save that. So let's just save the customization as that same report. So I think that should save it. All right, cool. Okay, so now uh, what was I doing? If I go down, then we can see now we've got the uh, interest payable. We put it on the books at 72 and then I took it off the books and I messed up by $3. Did I not put the right dollar amount in? Let me fix it. This is how you go in and fix it if you mess if you mess it up. Uh, this is the reversing entry. Let's drill down on the reversing entry and let's, uh, let's edit that and put the proper dollar amount in, which is 7292. 72.92 i don't even know what you did there how did you do that it's not even a dyslexified thing you just did something it's just like oh whatever like whatever dude i that's why we have the double entry accounting system so we can check the, the thing that you entered it right so let's go back down to the balance sheet again and check it out and then we'll scroll down and we can see now uh, that we have 